Good morning. Thank you, Bells. What a wonderful day it is to worship and to praise God on this sixth Sunday after Epiphany. We gather this day knowing that next Sunday is the time when we change into Transfiguration Sunday and we get, begin to move into Lent. Next Ash Wednesday begins February 22nd. That may seem like a ways away, but it's not. It's a little bit over a week. So we will have an Ash Wednesday service at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. And then the Lenten series will begin on the weeks following that with soup at 6 o'clock and the study beginning at 645. The study this year will be Confirmation 101. You'll begin to learn and share some of the things that we do during Confirmation about the church and the history and God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So that is for everyone, and it is in two weeks. March 1st is when we will begin on that. It is, it is also Black History Month, and so we celebrate the history of all those who have gone before us and what they have taught. The first hymn will be in recognition of that as we gather to worship and to praise God. Let us center ourselves around God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Open your hearts and open your minds to hear God's word, to feel God's presence. As we gather to praise God, will you stand if you are able and join me in our call to worship. As people of faith, we worship the Lord of our lives. I learn about God. As a people of faith, we worship the Lord of our lives. My friends and I learn about what we can do to make this world a better place. I rest from my tiring week. As I worship. As a people of faith, we worship the Lord of our lives. We want our children and grandchildren to grow in faith. I worship and wonder. As a people of faith, we worship the Lord of our lives. We come as we are. In our worship, let us catch a glimpse of what we might be. that 
See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversary. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing the commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray by bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today, and I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may have the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Will the children come and gather round? Those of you here and those at home, I'm glad you're gathering around me. Come in, Titus. There we go. I'm glad you're feeling better, TT. I'm so glad that you're feeling so much better. So what's this look like? Instrument. An instrument of some sort. It's a dinghy instrument. It looks like a what? A bowl? Yeah, it looks like a what? Dinghy. A dinging instrument? Yeah. What do you think? Here, listen. Looks like a bell. Kind of a, some kind of drum. It looks like a bell too, doesn't it? We'll see. They kind of all sound the same when you put, or not the same, but they all sound different, but it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, so look at, you'll get, all get to try in just a minute. Look around you. What do you see? Do you see people that look the same? No. No, you look different, don't you? But you're all beautiful. You're all beautiful. God loves us. So you get to start. You pick one. Hit one. You have to hit it inside those. It makes a... There you go. You play. You do, too.
you hear sounds, music, sounds. Sounds kind of cool, doesn't it? So what happens if we do this? Does that sound pretty? It, yes, it, it does look like a finger. So it does. It's a dissonant. So sometimes we might not, we might not always agree, and we sound like this. But then let's change it. See how we change the sound? You tried it already. You, we all tried it already. So, so it's about how we look and how we act and how we believe in God. And sometimes it's all a little bit different. And sometimes it's all the same. But it's always beautiful. Okay, stop hitting it now, okay? It's always beautiful. Just like for you, God is always beautiful. God believes that you are beautiful, and we grow, and we change, and we're all part of who God calls us to be. Use those, use that beauty, use that beauty to share God's love, okay? Okay, let's fold our hands, bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for the beauty that surrounds us, that helps us that helps us grow and love one another. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so you can go with Juju in the back or go sit. You have to play first. (laughs) Capri, why don't you get up and walk, okay? Why don't you get up and walk, Capri?
as we move to a time of prayer, let us remember those in Turkey and Syria as they continue to look through the rubble for survivors and those who have not survived for the refugees that continue to struggle. For the world in which we live, let us open our hearts. Let us pray to God. So let us be at a time of prayer. Loving and holy God, your spirit fills us with grace and love and beauty. May we share that with others. May we live our lives following you so that what has been planted grows and spreads seeds around this world. Oh God, we come this day offering our hearts, listening for your word and knowing that you will continue to be with us in this season of epiphany of the light the star that we follow may we continue to grow may we continue to feel your presence and live out your love as we stand up and speak out and show up for one another and for all in this world. Oh God, we ask for prayers for the leaders, the leaders of our community, the leaders of our state, our nation, and our world. May choices be made as we live out the love that you share with us. Oh God, be with us those in Turkey and Syria as they continue to look and find survivors where lives have been changed drastically. May your arms hold and give strength. No God, there is much violence in our world. Help us to share peace to live our lives in the words that we say and the actions that we do shine towards peace. And, oh God, we pause for those prayers that are deep within us, offering prayers for those who are ill and those who are hurting, those who are struggling and those who are mourning, those who are filled with joy and those who need your arms. So we pause and we speak to you aloud or in our own hearts or placing in the chat the names and the places and the beings that we offer prayers for now. Let us be at this time of prayer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers of our hearts and of our mouths and of our minds and of our beings. As we come together, we pray the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you stand if you are able and join in singing like the murmur of a dove song?
Today we read in the epistle from Paul to the church at Corinth. We are in the third chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses 1 through 9. Hear these words that Paul writes. And so, brothers and sisters, I could not speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as fleshly as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still fleshy. For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not fleshy and behaving according to human inclinations? For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not all too human? What then is Apollos? What then is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. For one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and each will receive wages according to their own labor. For we are all God's co-workers. Working together, you are God's field, God's building. Thanks be to God, we have these words from Paul to grow from and to live into. Amen. Blessed are those who trust in God. They will be like a tree planted by the water, planted by the water, and sending out its roots by the stream. Blessed are those who trust in God. They will be like a tree planted by the water, planted by the water, and sending out its roots by the stream. Will not fear when the heat comes, and their leaves will all stay green in the year of the longest drought. They will still bear their fruit there by the stream. By Blessed are those 
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So today's assigned lectionary text, the three-year revised common lectionary that we most mainline churches read from, is from the book written by Paul. Written to the church in Corinth in about 56 AD, on Anno Domini, in the year of our Lord. And the people that Paul were writing to were Gentiles, non-Jewish people. And the theme of this book that Paul writes is how we belong to Christ and how we can be part of a community of faith. And he says, this life should be lived out in relationship to others. When the church is divided, it's not healthy or strong. So Paul is writing to a time that has a very complex situation, maybe somewhat like today's world. So as Paul is addressing the church in Corinth, he notes that it is rent with a quarrelsome spirit. And it sounds like the churches today, with its divisive, ideology, divisive ideologies, in which one person seeks power or their own way. Paul is reminding his congregation that they are all in it together, that they all belong to Christ, and none has a monopoly on truth and right. As a noted New Testament theologian writes about this text, grow up or you'll never be able to grasp the good news. Kind of rough to hear. Let's see if we can get at this another way. There was once a boy whose parents were killed by evil. He was brought to live with his aunt and uncle they weren't really happy having him live with them, but they gave him a small room under the stairs and hand-me-down clothes that were too big and just enough food of the leftovers to get by. They did their duty. Well, it came time for Harry's 11th birthday, and Hagrid, who was very, very big, found Harry out on an island and he told him about this school, Hogwarts, that he had been accepted into. Time got closer for Harry to leave, and he was afraid, but he was excited too. And as Harry made his way onto the platform of the train station, he was to get on at train station nine and three quarter. Well, it doesn't say that on the, on the stone walls. So he appeared to be looking around and came across this nice lady who had a bunch of red-haired kids, and she helped him to get on the train. On this train, Ron and Hermione are there, and Ron and Harry become fast friends, but it took a little bit longer with Hermione. He is an 11-year-old boy. And you know how it is when you go to someplace new, making friends, wondering if you'll fit in, what are the rules, how does all this work? Harry had all those feelings as well. Was well, they are in their big uh, area where the food is, the big hall, and all three of them go up to the sorting hat and each one of them are put into the same house. They go to classes, 
They learned the rules. They made friends. And time went on during that first year, and Harry thought that there was something that was going on that just wasn't quite right. So he decides he's going to go find the Sorcerer's Stone. He knew that it needed to be destroyed or evil would come back. How he knew that, I, we don't know, but he knew that he needed to do this. And so he used his nerve and his ambition. Ron, his friend, used his skill at chess. And Hermione used her logic. They worked together for good. Good overcomes evil. The one who plants and the one who waters all have a common purpose. And God gives the growth. We are God's servants working together, just like Ron and Harry and Hermione. Now, I believe that the reason that Paul writes this letter and he, that is, he is so tired of seeing all the infighting in the church in the area of Corinth, the ungraciousness towards one another and the taking sides, that he, he has to write this letter to the church at Corinth. And so he doesn't like leaders being set against each other. He says, one person says, I belong to Paul. Another says, I belong to Apollos. And what he replies is, I, Paul planted. Apollos watered, and God, God gave the growth. The Holy Spirit lives and breathes all around us. We must be open to hear and to live that breath of God. We kind of had the story of Ron and Hermione and Harry, and we have this story of Paul and what Paul is writing about. Now I want you to think about our church. Are we opening ourselves up to give God the growth? Or are we more concerned about who's doing what? Uh, let's think of another example. Have you ever seen six and seven-year-olds play soccer? Maybe four and five-year-olds play soccer? They have this default style of, of soccer. It's called bunch ball. I can remember Andy and AJ, when they began to play, it, everybody goes to the ball. They run to the ball, and there's this mass of children around this ball, and shins are being kicked as they're trying to kick the ball, and kids are wailing, and, and uh, it's just a lot going on. The ball is kind of right there because they're all kicking at it, and then when the ball does squirt out, there's no one there to kick it into the goal. So I, I remember from very early days, the soccer coach is always saying, play your position. Here's your position. Play your position. Play your position. Which is really not as easy as, as it sounds or that you think it might be. Because it means you must know what your role is. And you must trust your teammates to know the position, their position and that they're going to play it. This means that you can't go rushing into someone else's part of the field just because the ball goes there. And when the kids on a soccer team get that, it has this quality of a huge epiphany about how the game is played. Paul spoke of the church as a body, the body of Christ, and suggested that different parts, different people have different roles. When we forget that, Paul says, the church gets sick. He urges people to play their part and to respect others, allowing all to play their parts. I planted, Apollos watered, but God 
gave the growth. I know, I, I know I'm mixing my metaphors here of team and body, but the idea is the same. Play your position, avoid congregational bunch ball, trust others to do their part, and an epiphany will happen. The goal, as Paul tells us, is being part of God's mission of saving lives and of repairing a broken world. Let's get it another way of this text that Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. Paul is the pastor. He's explaining to the Corinthians that his work is not in competition with any of those local leaders in Corinth. Apollos has been kind of having a hard time because he thinks that Paul is trying to take over. But the whole task of what Paul is trying to say is that each person's task is part of what it takes to serve God. Listening and using and living into God's spirit in our lives. I planted Apollo's water and God gives the growth. We are all God's servants working together, as Paul writes. How are we working together? What is our calling here at Vermilion United Church of Christ Congregational? You know, in that text earlier, it talks about that some Christians are motivated by personal pride. That's why Paul's writing this letter. Jealousy and fighting divide us. But Paul is clearly saying that all Christians are God's servants. That we should work together for God's purpose. Whatever we do, whatever we do for the gospel is part of Jesus' mission. It's not about getting recognition or about... Uh, which leader works best or about living. It, it, it's all about living into what God is calling us to be. Changing and growing. As Paul tells us, I watered, Apollo, I, I planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the growth. Back to Harry Potter. In Harry Potter the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry and his friends worked together to keep the Sorcerer's Stone from the dark side. It takes all of Ron's skill at chess, it takes all of Hermione's logic, and it takes Harry's nerve and courage to help them accomplish this purpose. We are the church. God is at the center. How are each one of us building up the body of Christ? How are we using our skills and our gifts and our, uh, for good? How are we planting and watering? God is at the center. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. Let's live into the spirit of God, living and breathing within us as the center of our lives. Thanks be to God. There's a noted theologian and poet, Brian Wren, who writes many hymns, and he uses really wonderful language to pull together what the church and Christians and people of faith are to be about. If you are willing and able, will you stand and join me in our affirmation of faith as I have taken some of those images and put them together? We believe in God maker of rainbows, spinner of chaos, weaver of stories, daredevil gambler. We believe in Jesus Christ, rabbi of the poor, carpenter of new creation. We believe in the Holy Spirit, nudging discomforter, midwife of changes. We believe in the church as that group of people who have chosen to believe these outrageous, offensive, and wonderful truths. Thanks be to this one God with many names. You may be seated.
We come together to share our gifts, our tithes, our offerings, the gifts that God has shared with us, that we share with one another. And they are generous gifts that you share. So you may place your offering in the offering plate in the back of the sanctuary, or you may send it in through the mail, or you may send it and go to our website and hit donate and be able to donate in that way. Giving to God is an important part of what it means to be part of a community of faith. So let us share these tithes and offerings, these gifts that God has shared with us. Let us receive them and give them to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ, all creatures here below. Praise Holy Spirit, Comforter, one God triune whom we adore. Amen. We are blessed by your giving, by your opening your hearts up, by opening your hands up, and by giving your generous gifts to God. We dedicate them and use them for this community of faith to know that God gives the growth in all we do and say. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. We gather at this table. It is a table filled with love and hope. It is a table set for us by God through Jesus Christ who lived and breathed among us. It is a table filled with love. It is a table like your own table at home where you gather to tell stories, where you gather to talk through problems, where you gather to be together, where you play games, where you listen, where you eat, and where you are one. As we gather at this table, it is a table filled with not just us, but with all around the world who eat together. Whether you are sitting at home alone or at the restaurant alone, you are never alone because God is there holding you. This table is our family table. And all are welcome, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. This is your table, filled with love. We know that the Holy Spirit comes down upon us and upon these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine. We know the story of hope. We know the story that Jesus teaches. us. We know that the Holy Spirit lives and breathes within us. And so we know that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you eat it, remember me. And also the same way after supper, after giving God thanks, he poured it, and he gave it to his disciples. He said, Take and drink. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, remember me. This is the new covenant. This is the love that God fills us with, the spirit that moves within us. So we come together to share the bread and the cup. Will you join me in eating together? And you join me in drinking the cup. Christ has filled us. The Holy Spirit is holding us. We are not alone. This is God's table, filled with love. If you are able and willing, will you stand and join me in our prayer after communion? Bountiful of God, 
We give thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. circles of nurture that raised us from birth, companions who join us to walk through each stage of chapter, and youth and adulthood and age. We turn to you, God, with our thanks and our tears for all of the families we've known through the years. The intimate networks on whom we depend, of parent and partner, and roommate and friend. We learn through our families how closeness and trust increase when our sections are of just. Yet families have also distorted their roles mistreating their members and bruising their souls. Give, Lord, to each family in conflict and storm a sense of your wisdom and grace that strengths warm, sharp anger to insight which strengthens the heart and makes clear the place where rebuilding can start. Then widen that wisdom and grace to include the races and viewpoints our families exclude, till peace in each home bears and nurture the bud of peace shared by all who have made from one blood. As we go out into this world, know that Paul planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the growth. As James shares the light of Christ with us, we go out into this world knowing that we are filled with the Holy Spirit, an epiphany of God's light that helps us grow and live in this time, in this space. So go knowing that the light of Christ lives and breathes within you. Go knowing that we are filled with God's love. And so now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit with us now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>